Hi and welcome. Today I will show uh, a set of uh, Unior like universal uh, bearing extraction tools for cartridge bearings. Uh, I got this tool. I think it's pretty cool. It rhymes <laughs> and I wanted to make a video to show how it is used and uh, to explain it. And I will also, if I don't forget, uh, discuss uh, what I think this uh, or who I think this tool is uh, good for or a good idea to buy. Okay, so first uh, I, I was able to get this tool thanks to Unior's great support for my country. So I was able to buy it locally, which is not the case for many tool manufacturers. And I, if I don't forget, I'm, I've made a tool, a tool, <laughs> a video explaining uh, Unior tools in general. I'll make it pop up in your top right corner. If I don't forget when I upload this, and here now we'll talk about this set of tools and here this is the the picture that I got with this tool that I will throw away so I just want to make a brief recording of it and here it says we have seven pieces and I think that for United States they should make it like this <laughs> whoever watched Inglorious Bastards film knows what I'm talking about okay so this is a this is the, the prospect, but uh, let's look at this tool. It comes with a box. You can buy this everything separately or in different uh, setups. And I opted for this one that comes in a nice box that I can carry easily. On the bottom side is gray, top side is blue, so you don't miss it. In United States, I think they choose red color because blue is patented copyright by Park tools, if I'm not uh, wrong. So uh, the bottom is without uni writing and the top is uni writing, so you know what side up, not to have it all fall out when you open it. And on the front, it has these hinges that you just press in and open it. It's a very simple mechanism. Okay. Here it is. This is the user manual that you will not be needing because you are watching this video. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, and now what we have here, this is the, the major part that comes with a, with a weight. I'm not sure if this is one, one and a half kilograms, maybe even two. This is the, the working part. And it comes with a nice ergonomic handle uh, and this can be unscrewed and as far as I know you can buy every part separately so if something gets lost or damaged as is often the case in busy bicycle shops you can order separately I think every every single part if I'm not wrong. I've put some mounting paste on the threads to make it all work smoother and I will make a video on mounting pastes and make it pop up <laughs> I promise <laughs> I should do that finally and so this is the the first part let's slide this in this wider part goes here to prevent our hand from sliding off when we are working the tool as I will show later and now let's say I want to remove uh, let, let's first show the working principle so the working principle is the following let me take one adapter let's say this one you push, push this through a bearing and sometimes you have more wiggle room sometimes less depending on your on the part that you're working on but as as you start screwing this in this is what it looks like disassembled it has like a rod and this is with the cutouts so as you start screwing it in this rod goes further in and pushes these, par these thingies apart uh, providing a good grip against the bearing and that is all so in order to get it to work the first thing to do is to measure the diameter of the bearing uh, let's first show the working principle what to pay attention to okay so as I slide this through I can start tightening it and it will get a grip here and that's not good because it will slide out when I apply force so it's important to pay attention 
to make sure that you can feel these uh, like uh, notches get against the inner side of the bearing you're trying to pull out. So make sure when, when you start screwing it in to try to feel this. When you feel this then you can apply some minimum torque or, or use it like this to have gravity work for you so that it is stuck like that and then tighten it. Once you have, have it tightened uh, you can use tools, it's preferable to use tools. Here this, this one works with an 11 millimeter wrench and a 14 millimeter wrench so you can further tighten it a bit more, not super crazy but to make sure that it's nice and tight and then tighten it against the tool. It's simpler for me to work with smaller part than this heavy stuff so after I've done I can insert the tool into this, tighten it and then work. That is the principle, we'll show it now on, the, on a bearing. So I'll loosen this. Okay. Unscrewing it. Okay. And let's work on a bearing. Here we have a hub with a cartridge bearing. And the first thing to do is to measure the inner diameter of the bearing. Like this. And this is the bad side of di digital tools. This is 10 millimeters. It's, it shows 9.94. So the first digit, digit is 9, but this is effectively 10 millimeter inner diameter. And so when I choose an adapter, I'm looking for the largest one that fits. Because as you can see, all the dimensions are noted here. And there is some overlap with some tools. For example, I have a tool that goes from, let's see, this, this one is from 10 to 12 and this one is from 12 to 15 millimeters. So I always go for with the largest one that fits to give me better la leverage and better grip. And in this case, it is this tool from 10 to 12 millimeters. So I will use this tool and I will insert it inside the bearing and I will start tightening it. This is the, the thing I was talking about. Okay. Now I can tighten it further. And you can maybe see it from the other end. I'm not sure if there's enough light, but that's what I showed on the bearing when it was outside. So I'm tightening it finger tight. And now I will just use wrenches to further tighten it just a bit not going with some crazy torque okay this is enough I can feel the resistance and now I can screw it onto the tool okay I will tighten it just a bit that's enough and now I need to slide this back and then it hits this part and that gives me the, the pulling force. So I'm using speed and the weight of this, of this weight. Uh, if the thing you're working on is attached on a stand or something, then you can use both hands to keep this level to make sure that the tool is level because you don't want to start pulling this out at an angle because it might damage the, the interface. You want to pull it as more as close to the parallel as close to straight as possible so that's that's one thing so I can either either use my hand to make sure that it is straight and then pull or if it is not attached if the part I'm working on is not attached to anything I like to use just gravity because this part is wider it will not let this slide off so I can just hold the part and uh, use force to quickly pull this down and hit it and in a two or three hits it comes out. Let's try to demonstrate it now. Here I hope you can see that it is it started coming out. The bearing is already a bit almost outside. It's coming out slowly. I'll give it one or two more hits. Here it's now even more visible. So I think that third time it will be it probably and yes that is it it's come out
Now I can just unscrew this from the tool. I will have to use a wrench. Okay. If you tighten this super tight, using a wrench might cause this to unscrew, so you would have to hold it in a vise or something to, to completely unscrew it. But anyway, this is now getting loose. All right, it's off the tool. I can put the tool back. And now I need to unscrew this. Let's see if it will work. No, I will have to use this. Loosen it. And the bearing is out. And I can put this back. It has nice molds. This does not look uh, bad. It's, it looks like decent foam, decent quality that should last. So you can see if something is missing uh, in a hectic workshop <laughs> environment, th that helps to not lose any parts. And again, as I said, I think that uh, every single part can be bought as a spare part if something gets damaged, worn or anything, which is great. And uh, this thing cost about uh, $250, roughly. I will try to put some Amazon affiliate links or, or a link to my article explaining on your tools where the re local representatives are listed. I'll, I'll try to figure that out and, and put links so the, if you are interested to check the prices or anything. Uh, the, the price of the, that it goes by, I think it's a good idea for bicycle shops because it allows you to work relatively quickly and efficiently and it does the job well. For people working their own bicycles, like at home, there are two ways you can go. You can buy a, a tool set like this, okay, it's not a small amount of money. You can use something like this or similar gadgets to try to use a hammer and punch out the bearings, but the problem with that is that you are uh, not very likely to get it out parallel, but you might get it like at an angle. And because on modern bicycle parts and bicycles, uh, steel bearings are often pressed into aluminum or even carbon fiber materials, which are a lot softer. So you are more likely to damage something and then ruin the whole part. So that's not a, not a very safe way to do it, even if it is your own bicycle. And uh, another thing that you can do is to try to machine something like this and like DIY tools. And the problems that I face when doing that is that this is all made of relatively high quality tool steel. And uh, I, I can't always find those parts available and I need to find some machines to, to create things like this or similar patents. And it's not always practical. And that also doesn't come for free. So. Uh, maybe a better idea would be to order just separately a tool like this and then just get uh, a few of these extensions for the bearings on your bicycle, whichever you need. So that could also be an, uh, an alternative. Again, I'm, I'm not selling this, but uh, this is just my thoughts. And uh, I, I think personally when I'm buying tools, if I need a tool twice, I'm buying it and I usually make use of it even later on, so I don't have to keep borrowing it. And uh, also, when I buy good quality tools, uh, I do the job more easily, more efficiently. Uh, it, it, somehow, it somehow feels even nicer to start that when I know that it will all work <laughs> properly. And uh, it, it's usually an investment that pays off in the long run, if nothing else, then by uh, the feeling good of doing a good job, for me at least. So I, I got this tool and uh, so far I'm quite happy. I'll make another video or, or comment in a year or two to see how it fares. Uh, this is the model for anyone interested. 689-2BI. It's also printed on the, on the package. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video informative. 
and uh, as, at least as a good tutorial of how to use this or similar tools. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in some other video. Cheers!